What we have to move towards is helping our residents depend on themselves, be self-prepared first, because if there's any kind of a natural disaster with the amount of first responders we have compared to the amount of citizens we have, we can't get to everybody quickly. So we want to really make sure that our city is well prepared, taking care of ourselves, taking care of our neighbors, and then our emergency responders are our additional resource to really help where it's most necessary. Welcome to Harrimanology, the official podcast to keep up with Harriman City. We'll take you inside the city, explore the latest news and updates, show you how your government operates, and discuss the issues that affect us all. Now, here are your hosts talking all things Harriman on Harrimanology. All right, welcome to Harrimanology. It is Thursday, August 29th, and first off, a happy game day to University of Utah football fans out there. <laughs> BYU and Utah State get started on Saturday. Um... And uh, happy football season. I don't know if you're a, a football fan, Sherry, but for sure, it's game day. It's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> um, I'm John LaFollette, mm-hmm. communications manager at Harriman City, joined today by council member Sherry Orn from District 3. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm really great. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. So we had a city council meeting last night. Um, as usual, we won't go through every single item, but we'll go through uh, the highlights and kind of and kind of recap. Let's start with uh, the items of the work meeting, and there were four there. Um, the first one was a presentation from our emergency management team about um, a draft emergency management plan uh, that's been in collaboration with Salt Lake County and other cities. What was that discussion about and what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, they presented a comprehensive emergency management plan last night. It's kind of more of a template. Um, the first guiding document that helps us to be able to make good decisions for emergency management in our city. Um, there were a lot of questions back and forth. This is really just the first step in that plan. I guess the end result was this is a good first step, but what we have to move towards is helping our residents depend on themselves, be self-prepared first, because with the volume of, if there any kind of a natural disaster, with the amount of first responders we have compared to the amount of citizens we have, we can't get to everybody quickly. So we want to really make sure that our city is well prepared and in a position that we can do a good job internally taking care of ourselves, taking care of our neighbors, and then our our outs, our emergency responders are our additional resource to really help where it's most necessary. Yeah, and something we'll be talking about quite a bit this coming month in September is National Preparedness Month. Uh, We'll have a piece in the newsletter. Uh, We'll have some pieces on social media, but a good time to generally think about emergency preparedness at at a neighborhood, at a household level, neighborhood level, city level. uh, There are different plans, different ways of of taking care of ourselves during emergencies. Um, And there are always steps that we can take to be a little bit more prepared. Um, And it, some things may cost money, some things don't. Um, planning usually doesn't take <laughs> that right. much money, but it does take some thought and effort. And, and we uh, want to help encourage people this month to to think about emergency preparedness again and maybe take some more steps to be prepared. Yeah. And, and like you said, it doesn't really cost a lot of money. Um, it can. Certain things could cost a lot of money, but just just structurally getting yourself in a plan and maybe every month you work towards chipping off the expenses that might go with it. Like grab a crescent wrench at the hardware store and attach it to your gas meter in case anything happened you need to quickly turn off your gas. Just simple things like that that can really help mitigate um, additional problems after a natural disaster. Yeah. Then you discussed a rental and rental policy and fees for renting city hall facilities, especially the community rooms, kind of the main focus there. What was that discussion about? Sure. We have a great facility here, and we want people to be able to use it. But we also have to understand that any time this facility is used, it's costing the taxpayers money to provide um, staff to clean up, unlock, take care of different parts of the facility. And so we want to make sure that those costs are covered so that the taxpayers aren't subsidizing private events in our community rooms. So um, there was an analysis done on exactly what the costs were and we haven't done anything to those costs in the last seven years since we've been here so we really wanted to make sure we brought those up to date with what it's truly costing us so that we can make sure that we cover those expenses 
the next item was a discussion that's been off and on for <laughs> for some <laughs> <long> time, time. <laughs> about um, outdoor residential storage, primarily of recreational vehicles, RVs or trailers or things of that sort, maybe as an update to, I think the last time it was talked about was maybe February mm-hmm. um, in a council meeting. What was the updated conversation on that about? Sure. Um, we may, had some comments in February and staff took that back and tried to address the comments that council had, you know, concerns about like number of trailers and things like that. There's no question about the fact that we have a few issues in our city with, you know, uh, maybe even pop up RV storage areas coming onto to lots or vacant lots and things like that. And the intent is to try and find a tool that can mitigate those those impacts to a neighborhood when they weren't intended to be in that neighborhood. Then the balance has to be not um, taking away personal property rights. Um, I, I can tell you I made a comment about I do not want to become the Harriman HOA. We have a lot of HOAs in our in our city that are very strict about the things you can and cannot do in those areas. And I believe that that brings people to those areas because they want to live in a neighborhood that says, nope, you can't have that or nope, you can't do that. So that they have a very consistent, unique look and feel about that particular neighborhood. But um, personal property rights are critical in this nation. And so I don't want to um, encourage or enact ordinances that take away that personal property rights. And so then there's a trick between balancing this neighbor's rights against this neighbor's rights. Now, aesthetics, in my mind, are not a um, where we draw the line on you no longer have rights because I don't like the look of something you have. Um, it, it just crosses the line for me with personal property rights. Now, if you say you can't do that because it's causing a big safety concern to our neighborhood, that's a different conversation. And so that's been what we've been trying to balance is to say, what of all the, of this ordinance is really a safety issue that we need to make sure we protect our citizens' safety because your property rights don't trump anything if you're, if you're putting other people's lives in danger. So that was um, kind of the crux of the discussion. And then the next time we see this draft, it will be on a regular city council meeting where it has a possibility of, of being approved. So I would just you know, let people know that if you have pros and cons to any of that type of thing, if you don't like the way your neighbors park their trailer, or if you don't like somebody telling you can't park a trailer, all voices like that need to be heard so that we can really make the best decision for our, for our city. Yeah, it's it's a complex issue with a lot of arguable points. Uh, it may be the best way to put that. And it may be one of those where there is no perfect answer, but it's something the council's been trying to work through and our, and our staff have been trying to work through to find the best solution um, if there needs to be a solution. And so that'll come back for another meeting. Um, and we'll try to put something out on our social media or something to try to make people a little bit extra aware because this is a, I don't want to say hot button issue, but it, something that will affect people more than maybe a, a quarter acre rezone somewhere. So. Yeah, it, it will definitely affect you. And it, I, I think a lot of times people are naive to what what's going on. They just keep parking their trailer there because they have a spot right there and they can park their trailer there and they don't, you know, they don't anticipate that that could be removed from their ability and so I just I think it's really important that you pump that out on social media and let people know that these are the things that we're talking about please be a voice yeah um, and the final thing from the work meeting was an update on the high speed or from the high speed internet task force um, so last we had checked in was last fall we were talking about in fact we put out a newsletter piece maybe a little bit prematurely um, <laughs> about how the city was working toward a, um, a public-private partnership to do a citywide fiber optic network network um, to for for high-speed internet throughout the city. And shortly after we put that out, we kind of had to click pause on that project because we had updated costs that came in that were higher than we were ready for. Um, so we uh, maybe you can speak to the, to this update, but we had kind of put a pause on that, put out a new request for bids or proposals uh, later in the winter, earlier this spring, 
Um, what was the rest of that update and maybe what are the next steps you can anticipate? Sure, thanks for that. Yeah, I, I can tell you that there was a lot of work that went into the, the internet task force for a long time. And um, we felt like we had a really good plan and then the economy shifted dramatically. Bond rates went high, interest rates went high. So all those types of things just made it not feasible to um, saddle our taxpayers and our residents with the fees that would have been associated with that. It just, it, it wouldn't have been responsible. So we backed up, backed up on that. We looked at a different option. We sent an uh, ITN, <coughs> excuse me, an intent to negotiate. We had five people respond to that, five companies respond to that. One of those companies it, can do what we had asked for them to do. So we'll reach back out to them, um, work with them with the agreement, but it will not be citywide. It will simply be to um, put in a shell, basically, that will cover city facilities, like our water, those types of things that, that are traffic lights, all the things that will help make our city function better and actually be cost-saving measures for our city. And then our hope is that in doing that, they'll this company will also be exposed to more and more neighborhoods and more residents will be able to enjoy the benefits of that. Yeah, and it was stated last night during the meeting too that this company is already in Harriman working on a few areas, so not a place they're unfamiliar with. So hopefully that will lead to, to some better internet options for residents. Exactly. Uh, moving to the general meeting, a few items. Uh, this uh, there's a public comment uh, which we have every single meeting and any anybody can bring in any comment within the city's purview um, and last night there was a group of neighbors from the Harriman Rose area um, that commented with concerns about a recent change uh, the city and the school district had made with uh, a crosswalk near Silvercrest Elementary um, what were some of the comments or what were really all the comments related to um, there was a bit of a back and forth between the council members and the and the residents. Not a hostile back and forth, by any means. It's just a kind of an informational conversation going on. Um, how would you summarize that? And maybe how would you respond to to some of the comments that were made? Sure, I can tell you um, we had great participation last night. I can tell you as a general rule, our our room is pretty empty when we're having a council mm -hmm. meeting. So just a big thank you to the parents and students and um, citizens who really showed up last night because of a concern that they're dealing with. That's really what this process is supposed to be about. Our job is to represent, and sometimes it makes it difficult when um, you don't get a lot of feedback or a lot of input for, from people, so, so thank you. We had children speak last night. It was wonderful that they engaged in the process, and I know it was a little scary for them, but what a great, um, teaching moment it was last night for their parents to encourage them to participate in a civic process because truly um, that's the way it's supposed to work. Um, they, they would really like, I think overall the consensus was just something changed, perhaps a stoplight where um, the old crossing used to be and things like that. Um, th this wasn't the first time, obviously, we've, we heard about it. We've been trying to work with the whole um, committee, basically, that helps decide what safe walk routes are. Um, the council doesn't really engage in that. It, there's, a, there's a process to, to determine safe walking routes. The, really, the engagement we truly have is through our police officers because they go and, and they work with, these, with these, this council of people, the school district and the, you know, d different people from the school to really determine what's safest. And um, I know for a fact that, that it was determined in large part with, through our police officers that the very safest place for these kids to, to cross is gonna be at a light. And so we have a light, it's, it's further east than what the current crossing had been. And um, it was determined that we would need to change the, the crosswalk to, down to the light, and um, which caused some concern and some lo lots of tears last night, which is kind of tugs at your heartstrings. You definitely don't want to, people to be upset, especially little children like that. You want to do everything you can do to accommodate that. But at the end of the day, um, I have to trust that we are going to do everything we can to make it most safe, even if the walk has to be a little bit further. If we have to 
figure out how to get some maintenance and get the goat heads off the sidewalk. There were some comments about that. Um, but I 100% trust our police officers. I believe they do everything possible to keep our residents safe. I do not believe they would ever make a decision to inconvenience people for no reason. I believe that they strongly believe that that's the safest place right now. Now, we have asked for a traffic study, and that's in the works. It's going to be probably closer to October because that's how studies work before we can really get it back, analyze it, and make a good presentation on that. And um, after we see those results, maybe it will come up with a great um, solution to the issue that we have there right now. Um, if not, I know uh, Council Member Shields made a lot of comments last night about then we'll look outside the box. We'll do everything we can to try and do our best to make sure citizens can cross our roads safely. I agree with the medians. I think they're very distracting. I, I think all the things planted in them. But we have a plan in our budget to try and address those types of things. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen overnight. And we like it to happen overnight when we see a problem. And we like it too. But we're, we're behind certain constraints. So our job is to try and, first of all, priority is get the kids to school safely. And I think that that's what we're trying to work on. And one more piece of that is uh, there was a, a quick thing last night in that conversation about warrant studies. And you mentioned this traffic study. Uh, the city and the engineering staff pretty much always try to make sure that uh, any treatment, whether it's a stop sign or a traffic signal or a number of lanes, something is warranted by a national and state standard. And this is what that study is, is going to try to determine. It, that includes traffic count, it includes you know, peak traffic versus average throughout the day traffic. Um, and this happens with everything that we put in. And it generally needs to be warranted or needed um, by what the study dictates, and then we can potentially use one of any number of treatments to the road to, to mitigate something. Um, so we are doing the study, but that doesn't necessarily mean there will be a change, but this is to help us decide what, if anything, should be added there or, or yeah. changed somehow. Yeah, and I, I love that, that you brought that up, warranted. Um, and it's not, it doesn't just look at whether or not it's convenient to ch cars. It looks at what's the most safe way to address that intersection because it's going to take into account crossings and things like that. So, so it's going to have to look at all those things to make sure that it's the most safe decision. Yeah. Okay, I would just add one more oh, quick sure. thing, Jonathan. Just, just back to our public comment process. Just, just encourage our residents to always know that the council is here to serve. Our job is to represent you. And we really appreciate citizen feedback or input. There is no uh, concern that we're approachable, I guess. We're just, just like you. We're just people who live in this community. We're your neighbors. We're people you bump into at the grocery store. So, so there's never a time that we can't be approachable. So if you have issues with things going on in the city or questions or concerns or ideas, about how to make things better or things that really could help improve the quality of life here, please reach out to us. That's really what we ask. Yeah. Uh, shifting gears to one last item, uh, there was a voting item for an amendment to the Mountain View Plaza Master Development Agreement. A mouthful, um, but this is something we've, we've mentioned before, um, basically south of the Winco commercial area. We call that Anthem um, and north of what is going to be the Auto Mall there's the Mountain View Plaza development that they're that's coming out of the ground right now um, and there is a master development agreement tied to this which is an agreement between the city and the developer on what's going to come up there and it sets certain parameters um, there's an amendment to this MDA last night what was that amendment for and maybe we could talk about just the relationship the city's had with the city council and and how the two have worked together on this. Sure, thanks for bringing that up. Um, I, I will start with that because there was a great compliment paid to our staff last night about from the developer about um, the professionalism, the ease of working through this, and, and how, how it really helps make the project run smoothly and be really successful. So thank you for that. Thank you to our staff for all the hard work that really truly goes into this. And uh, thank you to the developer for listening because 
what happened is is there was a change there was a plan to do it differently a few years ago and then COVID happened that plan went away and they came back in and said what do we really want to do with this property the council um, talked to them about things that were really needed in our community could they address those they went back to the table yes we could address those here's what we can do and so the really a collaborative effort working together with them council and staff to try and figure out how to make this a good development for our city um, I, I don't think it should be a surprise to anyone that we need commercial developments on our city. They, they generate tax revenue, and not only that, but they provide services that are needed by our, our residents. We hear all the time about even entertainment-type venues or uh, food venues, restaurants, those types of things. And um, that's the direction that they're going in. That's the direction the MDA has them going in. And they've just been great partners in, in that direction. The, um, they came in last night to do an amendment to the MDA. There is a veterinary um, association, I would say, that would like to come into there, a very professional veterinary association. And so it was prohibited in some of the uses. And so they asked permission to change that and allow that use there. So um, after analyzing, you know, what they would be and things like that, that change was made. So one of the buildings will have a veterinary, a veterinary clinic in it, which is needed in our community. And then uh, they also um, brought up that towards the back of the development, there's like a currently it was planned for a two-story building. But they might even look at doing a three-story building, but the, the intent is to do mixed use in that, so kind of business stuff on the bottom. And then um, they're considering doing like a um, event venue, like a reception venue or something like that to where people could have a space to rent out and have, a, have an activity, have a have you know a party have a wedding it, whatever it is that you want to have in those type of things and maybe even a vision of having it to where even rooftop type of stuff after that to where you could take the you know outside up on the rooftop those types of things which is another thing that we really are sorely missing in our community so super grateful for those those changes those were approved last night and we look really look forward to that doing that they had a little a couple more things about changing up some of the plaza areas a little bit of design work and stuff like that but all really professional looking all very pleasing to really invite community engagement yeah and they're working on that now so this is something that we're hoping <laughs> nothing's done until it's done but it seems like it's well in progress and, yeah. and will be a nice addition to the community on a development timeline sooner rather than later. Yeah, I, that was definitely my comment last night was just thanks for doing it because a lot of times we get we get developers come in and like, here's what we're going to do, here's what we want to do, and then we wait and we wait and it's like, it just doesn't happen. So we're super excited that this is coming out of the ground. If you're driving north towards Winco or south past after Winco, if you look on the east side of the road, you're going to see it getting built. So yeah. super excited. Well, that'll be all for for this week. Thank you for coming in um, after a it wasn't a super long meeting, but it was a late <laughs> night. So thank you for coming in early. This is Thursday morning when we're doing this. Yeah, sure. um, as always, if you have any questions for us or the city council, you can always send them in on any platform you're listening or watching on. Thank you for listening thank and you. watching, and we'll catch you next time.